In this tutorial, you will design and build your own ESP32 board. Once you finish this tutorial, you will know all the essential steps to design and build any board you like. Let's start. You don't have to install anything. We will design our board directly in browser using software called Easy EDA. Go to Easy EDA website. They have a number of different versions of the software. We are going to use this free version. It's the standard edition. Open it. We are going to create new project. And I'm going to call it ESP32 Tutorial. Save. We are going to change the size of the schematic. I'm going to use A3 format. And I'm going to change the title to ESP32 Tutorial. And I'm going to change the company name to Fedevel. We are going to rename the schematic. And save the project. I'm going to create a title on this schematic page. So everyone knows what is this schematic about. Make it big and maybe we can use bold. Nice. And now uh, find some documentation about ESP32. We need some reference schematics, which we will use. So uh, we are going to build our schematic based on this ESP32 Vroom module. I copied the link to the datasheet. I'm going to place it into our schematic so we can quickly find the datasheet if we need it. Okay. Now let's find the reference schematic. It's down here. Open it. Again, copy the link. Place it into our schematic. It's going to be helpful because you may need to go back to this schematic a couple of times. So this is a quick link to find it. And there is one more reference schematic which we will use. And it's from a little bit different model from this S series. I'm going to open it. I'm going to copy the link to the schematic. And place it into our schematic. Perfect. Save. Now let's have a look what we need. We need the model. So go to uh, LSC, LCSC parts and we are going to search for ESP32. Wi-Fi module. and find uh, the one which is in the stock. So we will use this one. We need to copy this LCSC part number and we will use it to find this part in the library. So we don't have to create the symbol and print. We can just use them. Click on place. And here it is. We have our ESP32 model schematic symbol in our project. 
Next uh, chip, what we are going to need is this uh, USB to serial. So I'm going to find it. Uh, maybe this is not what we want. Search again. Okay, so this is A02 revision, silicon revision. And we can use it. So copy. Again, search in the library. They have it in stock. Place. And we have also this USB to UART chip in our schematic. Next, we will need this regulator. Copy. Find it. Again, uh, we are going to use the one which is most available. Uh, or maybe not this one, because the, this is only 800 milliamps. We would like to use this one amp. So select this. Copy the number. Find it in library. They have it in stock. Click on place. And here it is. This is the regulator. Go back to reference schematic. Next, we would like to place there the USB connector. So search for USB connector. We would like to use the Molex one. And they have number of them. I used before uh, one, this one. So we are going to use it again, okay? So use this. Copy it. And uh, find it in the library. Place it into our schematic. I'm going to flip this. Okay. Go back to schematic. Now we need this ESD protection diode. So copy it. Go directly to the library. Maybe they have it there. Search for it. Okay, here it is. Perfect. We can use it. I'm going to rotate. Press spacebar to rotate. So select the uh, text and use spacebar. Or you can use the icons in the toolbar. Next, the transistors. Again, go directly to the library. Try to find them. They have two. I'm going to use this one because uh, it's more available. They have more pieces in the stock. Save the schematic so we don't lose our work. Now the buttons. Go to switches, tactical switches. I'm going to use this one, C and key. You would like to use this 6x6 SMD button. Apply. Perfect. Copy the number. Go to library. Find it. They have it in stock. Place it into our schematic. Okay, what else we need? Capacitors, 100 nanofarad capacitors. Go to capacitors, multi-layer capacitors, ceramic capacitors. We are going to use the Samsung capacitors, 0402. 100 nanofarad. Apply. Which one is available? This one. 
Okay, 16 volts, perfect. We can use it, copy. Find it. Uh, it's this one, okay. Place. Press spacebar to rotate and left click to place it. And it is used also here where the enable is and on the power. And it's also here close to this USB to UART. So I'm going to copy it. We are going to place it close to the enable pin. Then we need one on 3.3 volt and we need one here okay go back to schematic next 22 microfarad uh, and this one is going to be in bigger footprint so i'm going to use 0805 22 microfarad apply Okay, 25 volts, 22 microfarad. We can use it. Copy. Go to library. And find it. They have it in stock, I can see it. And place it here. Well, let's have a look if 22 microfarad is somewhere else. It's also here, but... But I think this uh, regulator uh, doesn't need 22 microfarad. I'm going to open data sheet of the regulator. Let's have a, let's have a look what they recommend. 10 microfarad. Okay, so go and uh, let's find 10 microfarad capacitor. We would like to use a smaller one, 0402. Apply. Okay. 6.3 volt. That's maybe we would like to use this one, 10 volt. Okay. Copy it. And find it. 6.3 volt would be like too close to the 5 volt what we are using. That's why I decided to use 10 volt. We need two of them. Go to schematic. Okay. What else? What other capacitors we need? Four point micro seven, four point seven micro. Okay, let's find it. Four point seven. We're gonna apply order based on availability. We can use this one. Open it. Copy the number and find it. place and it's here where the USB to UART is. Next uh, we are going to create these resistors or we are going to find these resistors, zero ohm resistors. We are going to use this uh, Uni Royal brand of 402 resistors, tolerance uh, plus minus one percent that's what I normally use. And we can use this one. That's exactly what we need. Copy. Find it. And place it into our schematic. Okay, what other resistors we will need? 
10k. Copy this part number, go directly to library, and we will just adjust this uh, part number so we don't have to search on the website. This is much easier, much faster. 10k. Place it. Okay. Is there any other place? Uh, here we need also 10k. Suspend the and uh, here is also 10k close to the enable pin so we need to add two more 10k resistors copy paste it close to the enable pin press spacebar to rotate and also place it here suspend the Next, uh, we are going to uh, use this 22.1. Again, I'm going to just find it this way. It's much, much faster. Place it. It's close to the V bus. Press spacebar to rotate. And the other resistor is 47.5K. So I'm going to change this. Place it. Okay. Go back to reference schematic. Next, uh, we will need this one. 2K resistor connected to reset. But if we go into data sheet of this USB to UART, there are some recommended circuits. And uh, when we have a closer look, they actually use one kilo ohm pull up resistor on the reset bin. They even say like in all cases, one kilo ohm pull up on reset bin, reset bin is recommended. So instead of 2K, I'm going to find 1K resistor. And uh, I'm going to place it close to the reset pin somewhere here. Okay. Go back to reference schematic. Next, uh, we need this resistor for the LED. And um, from my experience, I will use uh, 5.1K because uh, we don't want to have very high current flowing through the LED and this 5.1K is just good enough to have really nice light from the LED. Not strong and not weak, just right. Okay, so next we can just find the LED. Uh, we would like to use basic part, so search for basic part because these are cheaper for assembly. Oh, they do five. Okay, place it. They don't have it in stock right now, but don't worry about this because uh, it just keeps changing. Save it. We are going to connect this switch. I'm going to move this. And I'm going to place ground symbol here. Connect the capacitor. and copy and paste the ground symbol. I'm going to delete this because uh, this is exactly the same circuit and this is just faster when we copy and place it. Perfect. 
And let's have a look where we need to connect it to the enable signal. And don't forget this enable signal is also connected to this resistor and capacitor. So I'm going to move it. And now we have two same capacitors here. So we can delete one. And if needed, we can adjust the value of the one which is already there. So if needed, we can use 200 nanofarad. I'm going to connect this pool up to 3.3 volts. So I'm going to rename this to plus 3v3. Okay. I'm going to move it a little bit. Don't forget to uh, use snap again. This is very important. And I'm going to call this net enable n. Okay, and I'm going to connect it here. So once I use exactly same name, these two nets are going to be connected together. Perfect. Next, I'm going to connect these uh, two capacitors. They are connected to the 3v3 pin. Maybe a little bit up. Okay. Copy the ground symbol, paste it, paste it, copy the power symbol, paste it. And next we can connect the ground. I'm just making it a little bit nicer. Okay, copy the ground symbol, paste it, paste it. Perfect. Now we are going to connect all these other pins. So I'm going to simply just copy this. This is easy to do. IO20 is not used, I will just delete it a little bit later. Okay, delete this, delete this. Now, name this and this is actually input only so i'm going to call them inputs name rest of the signals Almost done. I'm going to rename this to transmit and receive. Delete this and it's done. Perfect. 
save. Next, uh, I'm going to explain why I use this input if we go into datasheet. And when we find the pin description, here you can see these pins, they are actually inputs. Okay. That's why I call them uh, inputs. And they are 36, 39, 34, 35, 36, 39, 34, 35. Okay. Next, we are going to connect this USB to UART. So, uh, I'm going to start with ground pins. That's the simplest connection. And it's also closest to the symbol. That's why I often draw it uh, at the beginning. Okay. Next, the reset signal. Connect it to this pull up. And connect the pull up to 3.3. Then suspend. Press spacebar to rotate. Copy, paste. Next, I'm going to make a note that this resistor is not fitted by default or not connected. So very simply, I just place here this text and F, not fitted. And I'm going to use italic. Okay. So I will know that this resistor is not fitted. VBUS. We are going to connect VBUS. Uh, we are going to connect this uh, voltage divider to ground and VBUS. So I'm going to move it a little bit to make some space. Uh, draw it maybe like this, put here the resistor divider, connect it. One is going to be connected to ground and the other one is going to be connected to VBUS or plus VBUS. Plus 5 volt. VBUS. I always put there also the uh, value of the voltage so I know what we would measure there. Okay, perfect. Save. Next, we are going to connect these uh, decoupling capacitors. So place it maybe like this. Connect it. Perfect. And connect the power. Done. Uh, 
I'm going to connect the USB pins. I'm going to call this one USB positive and this one is going to be USB negative signal. And be careful, be sure you place them correctly, okay? Positive plus, negative minus. We have connected the USB to serial. Now we are going to connect this uh, USB connector. So the VBUS is connected to VBUS and ESD diode D minus and uh, D plus are connected both to ESD diode and to the USB signals. So I'm going to move this little bit and I'm going to add one more extra component here. I'm going to add this 100 nanofarad capacitor just in case we need to do some filtering. I'm going to co connect the ESD diode to the VCC pin. I'm going to connect the capacitor to VCC pin. Uh, we are going to connect the ESD diode to ground. And also I'm going to connect this capacitor to ground. Okay, D minus signal, D plus, connected to ESD protection. And connect the VBUS power symbol. I'm going to move it a little bit up. And we are going to connect it to the USB to serial chip. So paste it here. Be sure positive is eh, positive is placed on the plus and the negative is connected on the minus signal. All this is going to be connected to the ground symbol. Copy and paste, paste, paste. Perfect. We have connected the USB connector. Now we are going to connect this RX, TX, DTR, RTS. We need to connect them to this USB to UR chip. So go to our schematic. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to name this nets. DTR, TXD, RXD, RTS. And uh, Let's connect this. Remember how it is connected. So I'm going to move it. Flip this transistor. That's very important. Don't forget. The arrow has to be like this. Connect it. Now connect this up here. Connect this one up here. Okay, almost done. Go back to schematic. DTR RTS. So copy, paste. Copy, paste. Enable IO0. Copy, enable. 
and we will place the IO0 later. Next this. So I'm going to draw the signals here. Move it a little bit. Copy. Paste. Copy. Paste. This is just faster. And they are all the same length. It looks nice. So TXD0, RXD0. I'm going to copy them. Press Ctrl to do multi select. RXD, TXD. Copy. Press Ctrl. And put it this way. This is again very important, okay? RXD, RXD, and TXD, they are swap. Watch this, okay? RXD, TXD, 0, RXD, 0, TXD. That's what we have here. This is connected. Now, uh, the LED, they have it uh, connected to the 5 volts, but uh, I'm going to connect it differently because we would like to be sure the LED will be on only when the 3.3 volt power supply is working correctly. So I'm going to connect it to 3.3 volt and ground. Be sure LED is oriented uh, this way, okay? It's very important. Now this regulator. So the input pin uh, has to be connected to the 5 volts and the output pin 3.3 and then there is the ground pin. So I'm going to flip it or rotate. Now flip. So the input is on the left and output is on the right. And we can connect it. So I'm going to draw the signal somehow maybe like this. Okay. I'm going to copy it. So it looks nice. It is the same. Place the capacitors. And place the ground. Okay. Copy. This is the output. And here I'm going to just call it uh, plus 5V. We will connect it a little bit later, okay? And we also need to connect this to ground. And this one connect to the output. Perfect. Now we are going to make the connection between the plus 5V and the uh, V bus. And I'm going to use this uh, jumper. So I'm going to find this pin header. One row, three pins. 1.27 pitch. like this and then we will simply just use a jumper to switch between different uh, power inputs so place it maybe like this okay in the middle we would like to have the plus 5v And then on one side, we would like to have the V bus. So if jumper is between pins 1 and 2, then the board will be powered from the USB. And on the second pin, 
the second pin we are going to connect to this header it is the external 5 volt power supply so if you place the jumper between pins 3 and 2 then the board will be powered from the header from the external power supply perfect now we are going to uh, connect this IO0 and I'm going to connect it a little bit differently because it is split between two different circuits or three different circuits basically so what I'm going to do I'm going to place here 22 ohm resistors I'm going to copy this resistor name or part number and I'm going to change it and I'm going to find the 22 ohm resistor like this search see it's 22 ohm resistor they have it in stock place it into our schematic and this uh, this is called series termination it can be helpful uh, to minimize reflections and improve quality of the signal especially because this signal is splitting to different places that's why I use it here and you can also disconnect this uh, resistors if if you will have problems or something so this will go to the connector and this one is going to be connected to the switch or, and to the transistors okay uh, you see the connector pin will go here and this uh, button will be connected to the switch and also to the transistor so I'm going to copy it and I'm going to place it here and also here perfect now uh, let's have a closer look on this capacitor here it is called C15 because I've seen in documentation there there was some there was a note about this so here when you go down you will find this note about C15 uh, this component may cause some problems so they actually recommend uh, do not fit it so what I'm going to do I'm going to place here the not fitted text on the top of this capacitor we are going to connect the connector so basically what we need to do we need to find these headers first I'm going to search for a little bit different header we don't want to use the 19 pin header we are going to use only 17 pin header so number of pins 17 uh, pitch is standard 2.54 and uh, number of rows is 1 well, let's see what they have in stock ok this looks good copy and find it in the library paste we are going to use only 17 uh, pins because that's enough for uh, for our board uh, in the original module they don't really use all the pins because uh, they have two uh, two variants for the ESP module I'm going to copy the pins from the module and I'm going to place them or connect them to the header like this and do exactly the same with this other side paste it here okay see we don't really need like 19 pin headers
Okay, so we have connected all the pins uh, same way as they have them in the reference schematic. Next, uh, we are going to connect ground. And again, I made small changes. Uh, I would like to have more ground pins. So we will connect two ground pins on each of the headers. Copy the ground symbol and paste it. And only what left are powers. So first I'm going to connect this external 5 volt. And also we would like to use uh, a capacitor close to this power pin to filter the power. I will uh, use same capacitor also for 3.3 volt. So copy and paste it here and here. And connect these pins to 3.3 volt. So copy 3.3. Paste it. I'm going to move this a little bit. And 3.3 also here. Connect it. Move it. Okay. It's connected. Save. We have connected this. We have connected this. This is just different variant for different model. We don't want to support this. It is not connected. We have connected this. Also this, this is also connected, also this, and um, we have not connected this diode, but instead of this diode, we use this uh, header. Now let's go to this different reference schematic, S2 module reference schematic, and compare what they have here. So this is connected very similar way. These are not connected, so we can ignore them. I just would like to, you know, see how this other model is connected, maybe if they have some different connection. Here they use 10 microfarad. And on this enable pin, they use uh, 10K and one microfarad capacitor. In our schematic, we actually use 100 nanofarad capacitor. So why there is this difference? Let's have a look into datasheet. What they recommend here. Down here they have this peripheral schematic. And on enable pin they recommend this kind of circuits. And here is a note. Uh, it is advised to add an RC delay circuit and then enable pin, we recommend setting 10K, 1 microfarad. Hmm. That's what they have in this S2 schematic, but in this uh, schematic what we are using, they only use 100 nanofarad. It's okay, we will use 100 nanofarad for now. If it's needed, we can always change it for 1 microfarad. Okay, what else is in this uh, S2 schematic? Oh, this one is not connected, so we don't need to care. Uh, see, they connected the LED to the 3.3 volt and use 5.1K resistor. That's exactly what we use. So again, here they use 10 microfarad. That's what we use, 10 microfarad, as recommended in the datasheet. Uh, they do not fit these 100 nanofarad capacitors uh, close to the switchy. This is connected exactly the same way as we have it. 
And on this GPIO 18, they have this additional LED. So what we are going to do, we are going to add user LED on this GPIO 18 pin. So I'm going to search for a red LED. Again, basic part. We can place it. This is going to be LED, which we can use for a simple testing. It is always useful to have user LED on the board. And this time I'm not going to use 5.1K resistor. I'm going to use a little bit different one because this is connected to the output pin. So we will use 560 ohm resistor. This is the kind of resistor what you may normally see connected to LEDs. Okay, and we would like to connect it to this GPIO 18. So I'm going to find it, copy, and paste it here. Okay, let's go back to this S2 schematic. What else they have here? So in this USB to UART, uh, they have this extra one microfarad capacitor on the divider which we don't have. So again, let's have a look into data sheet of the USB to UART uh, converter, what they recommend here. This is what we are using, self-powered connection, and they don't recommend any capacitor. So let's leave it as it is, and we are not going to use this. But I know for this USB to UART chip, there is something special. There are errata, uh, it means uh, there is problem with silicon. And uh, there is this uh, there is this uh, USB power on reset problem. And what they recommend, they recommend to use this kind of circuit. So what we are going to do, we are going to add this circuit to our schematic in case uh, you would need it. So I'm going to search for some uh, transistors. This is like super standard transistor. I'm going to find it or MOSFET in this small footprint. They have this one in stock. I'm going to place it here and here. We need two of them. I'm going to make some space. Okay. Now I'm going to move it a little bit and I'm going to connect this here and this one here. Okay, I'm going to connect these together. I'm going to put uh, here a pull down resistor and a capacitor. And I'm going to connect all these to ground. Let's go back to the errata. Okay, be sure the transistors are connected correctly. So the arrow is connected to ground. Okay. And uh, we also need to connect it to a GPIO pin. So I'm going to use this uh, series resistor, 1K series resistor, and uh, I will connect it to GPIO 23. Copy, paste. Uh, before we actually
can use GPIO 23. We need to provide option to manually uh, use this circuit. So I'm going to find this uh, two pin header, which we will not fit, but we can use these uh, pins of the header to make short circuit and activate this uh, special circuit by ourselves manually before actually you program the GPIO 23 pin. So I'm going to place it into our schematic and you can use for example tweezers or something to connect pins one and two together and activate the circuit. Okay, almost done. Perfect. They are not fitted by default, so I'm going to copy this not fitted text and I'm going to place it here. Okay. Only you may want to fit them when when you need it in case you have problems. Most people should not have any problems. I'm going to put titles to each of these blocks to make the schematic look nice and uh, and it will help to read the schematic so everyone will know what circuit, what each individual circuit is doing. So this is power input selection. I'm going to move it. Okay. Okay, copy this. I'm going to name this uh, 5 volt to 3.3 volt. This one is going to be power LED. This is something what uh, will make your schematic look more professional. User LED. USB connector. USB to UART or to serial. These are just to handle the serial signal. Buttons. These uh, titles are super useful because, for example, when someone have a look on this schematic, they immediately know the chip in the middle is USB to serial. They don't need to search for data sheet or have a closer look on the pinout. They immediately know what it is doing. This one is the ESP module. And these are the headers. I'm going to call it connectors. Okay, make it a little bit nicer. Move it. Perfect. Next, uh, have a closer look at these reference designators. They are kind of random. So what we are going to do, we are going to reset them. Notice now they are uh, just uh, designators with question marks. Some of them we are going to uh, name manually. So these are, for example, uh, headers, uh, normally I'm using J for headers, so this one is going to be J1 and this one is going to be J2. This one is going to be J3, J4, 
So instead of H, I'm using J. That's what many people use. And uh, all the other components we are going to uh, annotate automatically. So we don't have to do it manually. You can see J4 is still there. And now they are automatically uh, named based on the position in the schematic. Nice. Notice uh, these uh, reference designators for each component because it can be useful when we will be doing layout. It's useful if all the components in your schematic, they have exactly same reference designators as I have them here. Save. Now go and uh, convert the schematic to PCB. There are some errors or something. So let's have a look what is it. Okay, so these are uh, unconnected uh, pins. We have to double check. But this pin is not connected, so we are going to use this not connect flag. And let's have a look if it helps. 4872, when we refresh, 4871, it helped. That's the problem. So on U2, we are going to find all these unconnected pins, and we are going to place this not connected flag to all these pins. This should fix the warnings from the DRC check. Okay. Refresh. Okay, much better. Only the warnings from U3. Place this on every unconnected pin and refresh. Fantastic. No warnings. No errors, no warnings. I'm going to move this little bit up so it looks nicer. Okay, so 48 slash 48, it means everything is okay. Now let's try convert schematic to PCB and okay, save it first. And the moment of the truth. Yes. we can start working on our PCB. This is how our board is going to look. Here are all the 3D models from all our components. And now we need to design the PCB. I'm going to change the unit to mills. I'm going to move all the components a little bit down. And we are going to change the board size. Put here 1000, 1000, 2500, and 800. Watch what is going to happen. Apply, and this is our board. Be sure you are going to use this uh, 100 mil grid size and snap 5 mil. I'm going to move this uh, J1 connector. Don't forget to place it on the bottom layer. Watch the uh, position. Okay. Use exactly the same position. Move this on the bottom layer. Press spacebar to rotate. And place it here. Again, watch the position. It's very important. The distance between these two connectors it needs to be 700 mil. Next, I'm going to move or I'm going to place this ESP module. Again, watch uh, how I'm going to place it. Place it exactly the same way, okay? Now, USB connector, place it into middle of the board. And on the edge. Now the switch. Press spacebar to rotate. Watch the position. And place it exactly the same way. This will help you 
if you place it into exactly same position as I have it, then it will help you in the placement and in the layout. Okay, do exactly same for this second switch. Next, this uh, USB to UART chip. Be sure pin one location is uh, in the right bottom corner. The position, again, it needs to be exactly same. Change the snap size and use arrow down to move it a little bit. Okay, perfect. Change the snap size back to five and place this uh, regulator. A little bit here. Okay. Perfect. Save. Now we are going to place the components around the regulator. So uh, these capacitors, select C1 and use this cross probe. Okay. Now we are holding the capacitor. Press uh, left click to place it and press right click to cancel the movement command. Okay. It's very important. So select it. Use cross probe. Now left click and right click and move it somewhere here. So this one is uh, close to the output from the regulator and C1 is close to the input pin of the regulator. Uh, we are going to uh, hide the reference designators. Okay. And we can continue with the placement. Place this C4 close to the USB to UART chip. You can see where the power pins are. So press spacebar to rotate. Okay. And also 100 nanofarad capacitor. Again, place it close to the power pins of the chip. Press spacebar to rotate. Next, uh, this divider. So left click, right click. This one, left click, right click. Press space bar to rotate and move it. Next, the reset pull up. They are all connected to the pin on the top of the chip. You can see where it is connected. And it's pulled down. Perfect. Okay. Next, uh, we are going to place these components uh, close to the USB connector. This ESD protection dials, they need to be very close to the connector. So this one is for the power. Then this capacitor close to the connector and close to the ESD diode. Okay. 
again this one is to be close to the connector and the last ESD diode okay next place the decoupling capacitors for the module i'm going to place them close to the module maybe like here and also 100 nanofarad somewhere here Okay. Ideally, maybe we would like to uh, place these capacitors uh, very close to this 3.3 volt pin, but you know there is no really space on our board, to, and we don't want to place it on the bottom, so we will place it as close as possible. That's why we place them here. Next, the. Uh, capacitors which we use to filter the power on the connectors or on the headers again they need to be placed close to the pins so let's place this one close to the plus 5 uh, external power next capacitor is going to be close to this J1 and the last one is close to this J2 okay now this uh, header we would like to place it somewhere here because this is the place where all the three powers are easily accessible now the power LED we can place it maybe like somewhere here again close to the power And we need also this uh, series resistor. Press spacebar to rotate. Place it here. Okay, we can easily connect it. User LED. Let's place it on the bottom down here so it looks nice. We will have the power LED and user LED in nice places series resistor watch how the uh, components are connected watch these uh, lines okay the lines uh, are showing you where the pins need to be connected now uh, this pull up but we need to place it maybe somewhere here it will be somewhere on the way between the module and the switch okay place it same way okay as i'm doing it it will help you when we will be doing the layout now these uh, components uh, for the USB to UART so they need to be placed close to this chip 
the transistor spacebar to rotate watch the connection and think ahead how you are going to route these connections I'm just making it uh, a little bit nicer you know so the components they are nicely placed on the PCB aligned together okay This resistor and the transistor okay double check the connections and again think how you are going to do PCB layout, how, how you are going to connect everything together. Okay. These resistors, they are close to the connector, so I'm going to place them here. Maybe like this. And also the second one. maybe like here these uh, series termination resistors again place them close to the connector so it's going to be connected here I'm going to place it maybe spacebar to rotate maybe like this And the second one is going to be close to this one. Okay. Now this capacitor. Uh, here is some free space, so I'm just going to place it somewhere here. and uh, also we need to place there this circuit so uh, here is some free space for this uh, header again this header is not going to be really fitted on the board we just use the pins to short them for example with tweezers and uh, all these other components i'm going to place on the bottom layer Default, they are not going to be fitted, but we don't have really much space on the top side of our PCB, so I'm going to place them on the bottom. And they need to be very close to the uh, USB tracks. When we will be doing layout, we, we would like to have this, the pins of the transistors directly placed on the tracks. So there are no stops that helps the quality of the signal okay this pull down resistor uh, I'm going to hide some layers I can see it a little bit better maybe like here okay the capacitor this is a very simple circuit which is just uh, helping to filter uh, some uh, 
glitches or peaks on on the signalages switching off the switching off and switching on the transistor okay i'm going to switch off all the layers what we don't need save it and uh, double check how it looks nice really really nice this is how your board is going to look when you build it uh, we are going to set up some basic design rules before we start doing the layout and we need to double check this with capabilities of uh, jlc pcb so search for jlc pcb capabilities go on the website scroll down and find the minimum via hole size for multi-layer PCB it's 0.2 millimeter and when we change this to mils it's 8 mils so our uh, drill diameter is much higher 12 mils so it's okay and minimum via diameter is for multi-layer PCB 0.45 millimeters that's uh, 18 mils so double check if uh, the hole or if the via diameter is bigger what we are using 25 mils now the track width and clearance is minimum is 3.5 mils and uh, we are using 10 mils so it's okay they will be able to manufacture our pcb Go to layer manager, we are going to add two more layers, so our PCB is four layer, and I'm going to set them to plane. And uh, now go on layer two, it's called inner layer one, and uh, connect it to 3.3 volt. And uh, layer three, which is called inner, one, inner two, is going to be ground, just double check if it's ground, okay, perfect. If uh, you would like to learn more about how to set up correct rules, how to decide on PCB stack up, or how to decide on layers, uh, how to route tracks, check out our online courses. We have courses in different software, in KiCad, Altium, Cadence. We have courses for beginners, for professionals, about hardware design, PCB layout, EMC, measuring, and more. Just go to fedevel.com, you may find there something interesting for you. Now, let's go back to our board and let's continue. We would like to use snap size 10 and routing with 10 mils. And we are going to start doing PCB layout. Just use left click, left click, right click. Okay, so left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right. Okay, and uh, do fan out of all the pins from the module. This here and also on the top. And then we will place the vias. Almost done. These are all the signals what we need to route. Now use the via button and left click to place it. Now left click to select it and double check the size of the via 24 and 12 mils. That's what we are using. Okay. If the size uh, of the via in your PCB is different, then adjust the size. Okay. Change it to 24, 12. Perfect. Next, we are going to connect these two pins together. We are routing them on the top layer. Now we will use a via to go on the bottom layer and continue on the bottom layer. 
always where the uh, pencil is, that's the layer uh, which is active where you are doing the layout. I'm going to change the snap size to 1 mil, so we can go closer to the object, like this, okay, left click, perfect. Now we are going to connect these two pins together, so we would like to route, and left click, left click, left click, watch how uh, how it is uh, suggesting where it is going to route. Okay, and the white edges are basically the clearance. That's the space what we set in the design rules. That's the space around our tracks which is required, the 10 mil. Left click, left click, left click left okay. use mouse wheel to zoom in zoom out and if you would like to pan or move the pcb use the right button on mouse okay perfect the next one uh, we need to go around this header and left link connect this left, left click, left click, left click, left click, and uh, I see there is something weird, I'm going to move it, just press left button, hold it down and move the track to adjust it. Uh, we would like to place the uh, ground vias. Uh, but first I'm going to set the color of the net so we can see what nets are grounds and, and which are the power so we can easily see what pins we need to connect to the ground plane and power planes which are on layer 2 and layer 3 ok and we are going to place the vias because uh, if we would be uh, routing tracks in this area then we would need to reroute them later so first place the vias and then we can reroute we can route around these vias because we know we need these vias here in this place so i'm going to place them when you are placing vias use grid uh, five mils because then it's easier to align the vias uh, if you use one mil, it's like super hard to be sure they are on same level. Now when we will continue doing layout, now we can go around these vias. Okay, perfect. And we don't have to reroute the track. If we would route the track first and then we would place the vias, we would have to reroute the track. Just, it would be just additional work. Again, here are some uh, powers what we need to connect or some, some grounds. So I'm going to place vias also here. Before we continue doing layout in this area. And also here are some pins which are connected to ground and 3.3 volt. So place the vias also here. Change the grid back to 1. For layout it's really useful to have grid set to 1 because then you can go very close to the objects when 
you are routing the track go around the vias and connect these pins together okay double check how it looks Look, load uh, maybe we would like to move this a little bit closer watch this uh, yellow x that's uh, when there is violation uh, see when i place the track very close to the vias you see this yellow x it means it's too close so when uh, you are routing and when you are moving or adjusting the distance between the objects always watch for this yellow x and be sure there is no violation there is there is still a violation i can see it okay okay this is moving too close because it means there is a violation somewhere so i'm going to have a look oh there it is okay now it's better okay perfect perfect okay let's continue i'm going to connect this okay okay mm, we need a little bit of space here so i'm going to move this a uh, little bit change the snap uh, size to five to move the via and now back to one move the track okay 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 see there are many ground pins and power pins so we need space there and uh, there is no space to continue routing uh, so i'm going to route this a little bit closer like this Okay, I'm making space for the next track, what we need to route from the module. Okay, and now I'm going to place these vias here. One ground, second ground, and place the vias. okay connect the next pin now we have enough space so we can go like this around the vias left click left click looks good And also we need to connect these ground pins. So place ground via here. And also here. Uh, this is not ideal connection. Ideally you would like to have this connection as short as possible, but there is not really space so we have to use this kind of a little bit longer track to connect this decoupling capacitor or this filtering capacitor okay connect this one go around the vias left click save uh, 
this is too complicated so now let's go down here we are going to connect the pins which are here these are super easy so direct connection on the top layer this one we need to go down here and uh, go on the bottom layer and route it on the bottom perfect and now we can continue so this one uh, needs to go and uh, we need to go up to connect the series termination resistors so i'm going to place this via and route on the top layer connect these two resistors okay connect this one to the header make it nicer maybe like this and continue with the next thing now route as close as possible because we don't really have much space on the board we need to be sure all the tracks will fit left click left click okay next one super easy just draw the connection on the bottom layer and connect the pins together again super easy left click left click left click i'm pretty sure you know what to do oh this is a little bit more complicated so we are going to route everything on the bottom and um, then where this uh, led is placed we will use a via to go up and connect the led so connect this first now we are going to connect the path to the drag on the bottom so we use a via go on the top layer and connect it perfect next one next one is simple one left click left click left click again simple one we have connected almost all the pins from the module only few left left click left click okay now i'm going to connect it on the top layer like this and also connect this one same way so on the bottom and then connect the resistor on the top okay save next we are going to connect these uh, signals for the serial port and go on the top layer we would like to route these pins oh uh, the pins are very close to each other so we need to go to the rules and we need to change the clearance to eight 
Okay, we should be able to route now. Okay, perfect. So left click, left click, left click. Okay, like this. Move this a little bit down. And do exactly the same for this receive signal. Don't forget to go back and change the clearance to 10 mils because the rest of the board we would like to have routed with clearance 10 mils. And uh, we would like to connect these resistors. So place a via here. Uh, we need to move the track on the bottom. So I'm going to change this a little bit. We need space to place the via. Okay, now place the via. Let's have a better look on the bottom layer. And connect these vias together. Perfect. Next, we would like to connect this ground pin. So we need to place a ground via. Maybe somewhere here. So I can see the... It's very close. So I'm going to move it a little bit. Okay, make it nicer. Connect these two pins. Use spacebar. If uh, if uh, the suggestion is the other way, use spacebar to change uh, how it is suggesting to draw the track. If you don't know what I mean, when you will be doing layout, use spacebar, you will see what will change. I'm going to connect also this power and the ground pin. Again, place the vias on the same level because this helps us uh, when we route all the signals horizontally on the bottom layer, then uh, this helps us to save some space when all the vias are in a nice row. Okay, go around the vias. Now you can you can try using the space bar so you can see what I was talking about. Try space bar like this, see? Okay. This looks good. Let's place the rest of the vias here. So these are the vias uh, which are going to bring the power to the second layer, which is our 3.3 volt plane. This is the resistor from the LED. This is the uh, bigger capacitor, 4.7 microfarad capacitor for the module. This is the decoupling capacitor from of the module, and 
mean, uh, maybe we would like to place one more via here. It's not really necessary for this design, but I would like to use it here to to show you that when you will be routing your own board, uh, you may want to consider to place more vias for power. Sometimes one via is not enough. Okay, and now let's connect this signal, this really complicated signal, which is connected to many different places. Okay, we just have enough space here to go around all the vias. If in your case uh, you don't have this space, uh, you need to move or adjust uh, some of the vias or track. There should be enough space to connect all these tracks. Left click, place a via. Now we would like to connect this together. Okay, let's try it. First I'm going to connect this so I can see how much space I have in this area. It will continue like this way to this capacitor, okay, and now the enable, so let's continue, connect it to this pull up and to this capacitor, transistor, Okay, I can see now there will be a problem. There is not enough space between the paths of this transistor. And we will not be able to route it. We need to change this uh, footprint. So we need to change the transistor. Let's go back to schematic. And let's have a look of what other options we have. I'm going to find same transistor in the library. There are two. Oh, watch the footprint. This one is bigger. Bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. So let's use this one. I'm going to place this other transistors. Use the same name as we already have in the schematic. I'm going to swap this or flip this, delete this one, place it here, delete this one and place it here. Okay, now save and we would like to synchronize our schematic with the PCB. So go to design, update PCB. Here you will see all the changes that are going to happen, so be sure this is also checked. Apply changes, click on settings. The old transistors are gone and these are the new transistors. I would like to hide the reference designators. And uh, I'm going to delete these uh, existing tracks. It's easier to reroute these tracks when we place the new transistors there. So just delete everything. And place the transistors. Press spacebar to rotate. Place it maybe like this. 
okay the second one and you can already see the paths are much smaller there is much more space under the transistor i hope it will be enough for what we need so let's try it again first connect this okay now let's see what will happen left click and nice we can easily go and route the tracks under this new footprint connect this Okay, we can even fit there this second track. This is very nice because we don't need to change layers and this makes the layout much, much easier. And let's connect the rest of the signals. Okay. Okay, we need to change the clearance to 8. So we can route these pins which are very close okay connect also this pin okay don't forget to change the clearance back to 10 and almost done perfect oh it was like complicated part of our pcb let's connect this this is super easy what else this okay down here now it's quick Okay. Uh, this together. A little bit later, this will be replaced by uh, polygon. Uh, so right now we just would like to connect it because we would like to run DRC check and see if everything is connected. Uh, these vias are not connected. We need to connect them to ground. So select the via and uh, right here ground these are the vias uh, which are uh, directly in the footprint name every single via and when you name it uh, it will automatically connect it to ground okay almost done What is next? What we need to connect? I'm going to save it. Uh, next, uh, this pin. So let's connect it to ground. Left click and place here. okay this connect it again a little bit later here we will draw a polygon because this is power for powers maybe you would like to use polygons same here connect it but later it will be replaced by a polygon basically this is uh, we are routing this to give us an idea how the polygon 
will be created later. Drawing the polygons is a little bit more difficult, so it's easier for now just connected by tracks. Again, we are going to work with this uh, chip, so I changed the clearance to 8 mil, so we can connect these pins. Okay. Next, the USB signals. Be sure you use this snap size 5 so we can nicely align the vias and the tracks. Okay, place the vias. Uh, maybe they are too close to each other, so change the grid to 1 and move it like this. Okay, perfect. Uh, we can also connect this ground pin. And also this power. Maybe like this. We can uh, change the clearance back to 10 because uh, the chip is now connected. And let's continue. We would like to finish this USB connection. So I'm going to move this ESD protection a little bit further because we need a little bit more space. Uh, especially for the power. For the plus, v, plus 5V VBUS. Place the vias. We are going to finish this USB signals. So search for USB impedance. We would like to route them properly and it's recommended to use 90 ohm differential pair impedance for USB track. Search for JLC PCB stack up. Click here. And we would like to use Four layer stack up, this one. Remember, 3313, 1.6 millimeter thickness. Go to impedance calculator and we would like to calculate impedance for 90 ohm. Four layer stack up 1.6 and differential pair. Here, select for example 6. And for 3313 stack up, it suggests uh, 5 mil. I'm going to change this, 6 mil. So uh, you like to use trace with 6 mil and trace space 8 mil for our USB. Go to design rules and we are going to add a new rule for USB where we are going to use the track with 6 mil and the space or clearance is going to be 8 mil. Okay, via 24, 12. And we would like to apply this new rule to the USB signal. So select them and select the USB, apply. Okay. Click on settings. Go on the bottom layer and we are going to route this USB signal. Be sure you are routing with 6 mil track width. And uh, the space will be automatically 8 mil as we set this in rules. And this is what will help us to route these tracks with 90 ohm differential per impedance. The rule. Perfect. Oh, this is not connected, so I'm going to connect it. Okay, 
uh, we need to also connect this uh, tree. So uh, this exposed part is going to be connected to ground. So I'm just going to place then the ground vias. And uh, I just place these ground vias on these uh, parts from the switch because the vias will automatically pick up the ground uh, net. I don't have to manually write the net name into the vias. It's just easier and faster. Okay, the last one. Perfect. Looks good. Save. And uh, only few connection left. So I'm going to connect these parts from the switch or from the switches. Okay. And also these two. Okay, just vias. Next, uh, I'm going to connect these pins to ground. And uh, there is this plus 5v v bus, so I'm going to place this ground via somewhere here because we will use the space for for the polygon, power polygon. Okay. Connect also these. Almost finished, almost done. Connect this. Place the vias. We also need to connect this to ground. And uh, this, I'm going to move it a little bit. Just select it and use arrow up and arrow down. Okay, it is still on the track. I'm going to move this a little bit. So let's have a look how much space we have on the top layer. I'm going to place this ground via here. Again, double check what is on the top layer. Okay. And uh, we would like to connect also ground pins here. There is a lot of space. So we can just connect it like here, here, and here. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter like this. Perfect. Now this connection is missing. So left click, left click, left, left, left. Okay. And we also need to connect this. Left click and connect this one oops you can use backspace if you if you click and uh, you need to cancel the last click you can just use backspace and uh, 
here are few unconnected pins so I'm going to connect this via go on the bottom layer and uh, we need a little bit of space uh, I'm going to move this read out this okay now we should have enough space I will make it a little bit nicer oops I like it here are our unconnected pins so I'm going to connect them move it maybe a little bit and this and also this we need to connect it so go around this component go on the bottom layer uh, we would like to find some place on the bottom layer maybe we can route it like this okay and connect it okay let's have a look how it looks fantastic save go to design check DRC uh, but before we run it we would like to adjust the rules because where the chip is there would be many problems so run DRC check oh there are some errors uh, let's have a look what they are Oh, these vias are a little bit smaller than what we use. We use 24, 12, and they are 19 and 11. So I'm going to change it to 24 and 12. And we need to do it for every single via in this footprint. So just very quickly, I'm going to change them. 24, 12. because these vias are part of the footprint it's a little bit tricky to work with them but maybe if you find faster way how to do it then you can do it also faster way but I just change them one by one okay done so now let's try again what is going to happen oh still two errors so this one is too close to the component so I'm going to move the component a little bit just one mil okay perfect and what is this uh, there are some uh, missing connections so we need to connect this and also uh, this one and uh, the layout 
or everything should be connected. Perfect. There is still a 47, 48. Uh, what is this? Refresh. Okay, 48, 48. Now it's good. Perfect. Uh, double check if everything looks okay. Maybe move some of the tracks, make it nicer. Go through your PCB, okay? Before we start doing anything else, just be sure all these tracks are good. Oh, okay, I forgot to change the clearance to 10. I need to, okay, I need to move, move this again. Okay, perfect. Okay. So go through all the tracks in your PCB and make them look nice. Okay, maybe this, I, need, I would like to move this. Because in PCB they don't like these sharp corners or in PCB manufacturing. So I just move it away so there is no the sharp angle. Okay. Now we are going to create the polygons. We would like to connect it to ground. And we are going to create this as the first one. It's a very simple one. Left click, left click, left click, right click. Select this polygon. So you need to, uh, you will see when it is highlighted like this. Okay. Left click and change the connection to direct. This is what we would like to have. Okay, be sure the copper area is uh, visible in your setup if you don't see it. Now do exactly the same for this uh, external power. Connect it to plus 5 volt external. Left click, left click, left click, left click, left click. Again, in case you make uh, a mistake or a wrong uh, click, then you can use backspace to correct it. Draw it similar way as I do it. Go around the paths, what we would like to connect. Uh, maybe like here. And then right click. Select it. Direct. Sometimes the selection of the polygon is tricky, so you just need to find the right place where you will see it highlighted. So we would like to adjust uh, or correct this polygon. So again, select it. And you can uh, drag these points to adjust the shape like this. Don't forget to rebuild the connection. Okay, next one is going to be this, plus 5 volts. This is a simple one. Left click, left, left. Just go around the paths. Okay, almost done. Oops. Left click, left click, left, right. Select it. Direct. Okay, looks good. Uh, I need to correct this a little bit. Move it, move it, rebuild. Okay. Next, this one plus three point three volt. 
This one is super complicated. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm going to play with this read. Okay, this is a good one. Two mil. Go around the vias. You don't have to go around all these vias and tracks and paths, but I like to keep the full control over the space, which is between these uh, other elements of your PCB and the polygon what you are drawing. That's why I just go around the path and the other things. Because if you if you go too close to other nets with this polygon, it will automatically keep the correct clearance when it will fill up this polygon with the copper. So theoretically you don't have to go around all this, but as I said, I like to have full control over the distance between the polygon and the other object. So I draw it around there. around everything and uh, I always double check it if there are no spaces where the clearance was automatically adjusted. Let's do the polygon here. I will show you what I mean. I will draw this polygon. I will draw it from here like uh, left click. And I will draw it close to the path. You will see how the copper will be automatically adjusted. Let's finish it. Again, go around this via. Left click, right click. Okay. Now, see where is the edge of the polygon. And uh, when we have a look, for example, here you can see how the copper was uh, adjusted. So I'm going to change the shape of the polygon. Okay, now it's better. Okay. Draw this uh, big polygon for plus 5V VBAS. Always play with the grid because uh, for when I'm drawing polygons, it's easier to work with bigger grid, so everything is aligned uh, nicely. But sometimes I need to use smaller grid so I can go closer around some of the objects. Oops. Ok. 
okay almost almost finished be like this not too close like this left click left click left right okay change the connection to direct and double check okay so here i would like to adjust this a little bit again full control over the copper inside of the polygon that's what i like save so double check if we didn't make any errors again don't forget to change clearance back to 8 okay everything seems to be fine Uh, we would like to use also proper impedance for standard tracks normally it's 50 ohms so we are going to find out what kind of uh, track width we have to use for 50 ohms and for our stack up it's like six mils and what we are going to do we are going to select all the tracks we would like to work with the tracks only be careful do not select the board outline okay and I'm going to change the width of all these tracks on our PCB. I'm going to change it to 6 mil. So this way, uh, all the tracks what we will be using uh, will have 50 ohm impedance, which is standard for PCB layout. And also the space or distance between the tracks on our PCB is going to be bigger, which is better. But now we have to also adjust the track width for the powers we don't want to use six mils for the powers so i'm going to change it to 21 mil for this power pin i'm going to use two vias again it's not maybe necessary for this uh, design but i would like to point out that in your design you may want to consider in some cases to use more vias on power pins make this ground wider also this one and this one I use control to uh, select more tracks for more connections check how they look looks okay uh, hmm. maybe here I would like to draw polygon ground polygon because this is the output capacitor from the power supply so we would like to have like very good connection between this ground pin of the regulator and the uh, output capacitor of the regulator so i will use this ground polygon select it use direct connection okay perfect now let's continue select this ground this one this one this one this one make them 21 mils it's good okay oh this one maybe needs to be adjusted a little bit so i'm going to make some space maybe move this like here okay
rebuild and move the trap okay much better much much better perfect next uh, make this wider and this one 21 mil well, this one is going to be a little bit thinner 8 mil okay select 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 okay select all these make them 21 okay and on the bottom these are a little bit thinner 12 mils and this can be 21 okay because the pads are really uh, big so we can use 21 but on the transistors the pads are thinner that's why we use 12 mils select all these other connections 21 21 this one is going to be thinner 12 and uh, it looks like we updated all of them so look for blue color and uh, an orange color if all the blue connections and orange connections are wider perfect oh maybe this one Can make it wider save this time we have to change the track width to six because we updated all the tracks to be six mils and run the rc check uh, there is one error so let's have a look what is it uh, this track is too close i'm going to move it a little bit okay try again perfect no errors save we are going to add some text so we are going to work on this top seal screen layer and we would like to know uh, what are the capabilities of the jlc pcb what what is the smallest text what we can use and uh, minimum line width 6 and height 40 so I'm going to change in here line width 6 height 40 and this is the minimum text the uh, JLC PCB will be able to manufacture so I'm going to place this power text close to this LED because this is power LED okay same text I'm going to place close to the header so when the jumper is on this side uh, it is the board is powered from the external power and uh, when the jumper is on the other side the board is going to be powered from the USB okay now name for the second led that's the user led and uh, it's quite close i think the leds are not in uh, exactly same place i'm going to move it a little bit 
select it and use arrows to adjust the position. Okay. Now it looks okay. Let's have a look what happened with the connections. Oh, I'm going to read out them a little bit. A bit nicer. We have to use six mil. Okay. And let's check this one. Six mils and this one is twenty one mil. Delete twenty one and connect it. Okay. Next, uh, this is the boot or user button. I'm going to rotate the text, maybe 270. Okay, be careful, do not place it on the path. This one is reset button. Place it down here. Again, don't place it on paths, okay? This is the header for the manual reset of the USB connection. And I'm going to also mark the headers so when someone is holding the board they know which one is j1 and which one is j2 okay and also i like to mark pin one of the connectors or the headers so i'm going to place them here and here maybe it's too close so I'm going to move this and also this check the connection uh, okay I will reroute it Twenty one mil, okay. And also this second connection. Perfect. I'm going to create small marks. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to place this mark between the pins 5 and 6 and it's going to be a small rectangle it's very useful when uh, you are using these connectors you don't have to always count the pins you know this is pin 5 and 6 i'm going to move it a little bit now copy and pick where you would like to hold it when you do paste one two three four five left click and one two three four five left click do exactly same also on the bottom i'm going to move it a little bit like this again copy pick it paste and paste perfect save we have all the text on the top layer go on the bottom seal screen and we are going to add pin description i'm going to call this one io33 and i'm going to place it like this okay close to this io33 now 
we are going to copy it and we are going to place it close to every single pin on our connector I'm going to copy more of them so it's faster copy space and just name it based on the pins so this one is ground this one is 3v3 enable input 36 input 39 34 35 you can see on the pins what they are uh, this goes over the uh, header we will move them just uh, finish naming all these pins Okay, move this a little bit. Ideally, use arrows because then it will only move in one direction. And also select these two and move them away from this true hole pins. Move this one down. We would like to have it align all the text for this on the top and bottom copy this and uh, again copy and paste this do it for all these pins you know exactly what we are going to do we place them here, then we will copy all these and we will paste them here. Now rename all the text based on the pin name. And if needed, then move it a little bit like this one. We don't want to have the text. Uh, through this through hole holes because it would not look very nice and finish naming all these pins it is very useful to have it there because then people don't have to search for documentation or open data sheet to you know to know what kind of pins are connected there everything everything is on the board all the information they need almost done okay We are going to add few more information. First, make this a little bit bigger, 1280. And I'm going to put here copyright and the year when the board is going to be released. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to put here the company name so everyone knows who created this board. And don't forget the board name and version of the board. So I'm going to call it fun32 version 1 issue 1. And I'm going to place it here. And uh, 
I'm going to make a advertisement for the courses what we make. So I'm going to put here also this online courses text. Okay, if you would like to learn more about hardware design, PCB layout, then have a look on our online courses. So just uh, go to fedevel.com. Nice. Go to 3D model and double check what we have created. Wow, this is super cool. I really hope you like your board, what you have created. Now we would like to manufacture our board. So go to PCB fabrication and check if everything is okay, if there are no errors. Generate Gerber files. Here they are, you can see it. Go to JLC PCB website, click on instant quote, upload the Gerber files, what we have just generated, it's the zip file. Once they are uploaded, you will see your board. And we will only do few changes here. So leave all these default. I would like to change the PCB color to black and also uh, we would like to use impedance control, yes, and uh, our stack up is 3313, select it, okay, it's this stack up, and uh, here we are going to select the layers, so the top layer, then inner one, inner Two is the second uh, is the third layer and the bottom layer. Okay, it's same ordering what we have in our PCB. If you go here, it's inner one, inner two. Okay, that's what we have there. Uh, I'm going to use surface finish any. If you like, you can use a let free hustle. It's a little bit cheaper. And now we need to go and generate the bomb for the assembly. So export this see the file was created and also we need pick and place file for the assembly export okay go to the files what were generated open the bomb and um, we are going to unfit uh, the components what we don't want to have there so c13 R8 and J5. Okay, so delete P13, change the quantity to 8. Delete the R8, change the quantity to 4. And delete this J5. We don't, we are not going to fit the, the components which are on the bottom, so we don't need to remove them from the bottom. I'm going to just make this nicer okay and i'm going to save it as uh, our prototype version don't forget to select uh, csv format save okay go back to jlc pcb website enable the assembly this is our board we would like to only assemble the top side click on yes Confirm. They need to add a little bit uh, to the PCB to be able to make the assembly. So it's okay. Add bomb file. Select the prototype bomb, which is the one where we remove the components we don't want to assemble. Select the pick and place file. Click on next. Oh, they just would like to build something here so i'm going to put here like youtube video next and uh, 
22 parts detected, 22 parts confirmed. So everything is in stock. We can go to next. And this is how our board is going to be assembled. Okay, notice, for example, these components are not fitted. And also on the bottom, these components are not fitted. Um, everything seems to be okay. So save to card. And we can order it. Go to checkout. Address is okay. Uh, you can play with these uh, different shipping methods. Some of them are cheaper, some of them are expensive. I'm going to use DHL. Continue. I'm going to use PayPal. Uh, here are some coupons, so I'm going to select this one. So I get discount. Total price 170. Click on pay. Okay, I use my PayPal to pay for this and it's ordered. Now let's wait. And when we are waiting, uh, we would like to buy the components what we may need. For example, the transistors which are on the bottom. So I go to Farnell. That's what I normally use, but you can use also DigiKey or something what, what you normally use to buy components. I'm going to copy the name of the transistor or part number of the transistor. I'm going to search for it. Because these components will not be delivered, okay, or with the board, you need to buy them separately because they are not fitted. I'm going to buy 10 pieces. Uh, let's have a look what else we need. 10K resistor, I'm going to copy it. Search for it. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, alternative product, it's fine. Uh, 10K, 0402. 1%. Okay, we can use this one. Next, we also need uh, this resistor. It's the 1K resistor. So, search for it. Uh, no longer manufactured. Okay, we can use alternative. Uh, but this one you can really buy them in low quantities, so this one looks okay, 10 pieces. It's 1k, 0402, 1%, perfect. We also need the capacitor, 100 nanofarad. If you have these components in, in your stock, you don't have to buy them, but I would like to show everything what I need to build this board. So 100 nanofarad, 16 volts, 0402, buy it. Next, what else we need to know? Headers, we would like to buy the headers and I'm going to buy special headers. So if you like, you can use same part number, this one. And these are the headers which will go through. So there will be pins on the bottom of uh, the board, but there are also the, you can also put wires on this or inside of these headers. These are super useful for debugging. So I'm going to buy them. And also we need the uh, cap for the jumper. Again, use this part number. And we need this for the power header. So order this. Okay, go to checkout. 
and buy all these missing components the transistors resistors okay some people may not need all these components maybe the board will be working fine for most people board will be working perfectly fine some of them may experience or some of you may experience with this com error where this errata is applied so you will need them so i just received this email uh, where i need to confirm the assembly so let's have a look what they have here and from my experience even if this looks bad it, they will always fit it correctly so just submit this and okay We have received our boards here they are don't forget to remove the part of pcb which was needed for board assembly let's have a closer look on the board double check uh, how it is soldered also double check unfitted components have a look between the pins if there is no short circuit pin one position double check also the anode and cathode on the leds and again have a look if there is no short circuit between the pins on the bottom our components are not fitted also measure the resistance of the power rails on our board uh, it must not be short circuit do it also the other way around okay perfect no short circuit now uh, don't forget to place the jumper this is very important and we are going to connect it to power. I have this special uh, device which is showing the voltage and the current through USB. And also we will be looking on the green LED. Green LED is on and the current is 0 0.02 amp. I'm going to measure the voltage, 4.5, 3.3 volts. Yes. Now search for Arduino. Home software download the arduino id and install this software or uh, just follow the default installation it's super simple to install it start the arduino rde and go on this website scroll down and we are going to follow these steps file preferences and copy this and place it here in case there is already something just use a comma okay now also have a look into tools board and board manager and we need to search for esp32 okay and uh, you need to install this i already have it installed but you need to install it and then when you go to tools board you should see this esp32 and there should be this esp32 dev module that's what we will be using Search for device manager, open it. We would like to see if our board is detected by our PC. So when I connect it, we should see it here. Okay, there is there are these ports and COM8. Very important, remember COM8, uh, that's the port where our board is connected. Close the Arduino ID and uh, open it again, just in case to initialize it properly go to examples basic and blink example we can close this i don't need it anymore the default led arduino led is connected to pin 6 and our user led is connected to gpio 18 so we need to add a few lines of code i'm going to add this copy this and place it here here and also here okay uh, we need to connect our board so search here for esp32 dev module it needs to be checked and also the com port needs to be checked okay board is connected now compile and upload and if everything is working fine we should see the led blinking yes our code is working in case you have problems with COM port, you can fit, uh, you can try to fit all these components on the bottom. And then uh, when you will be connecting USB, 
use tweezers to short these two pins and it should help. Now, a little bit more complex example. Search for Wi-Fi simply, simple Wi-Fi uh, server. And uh, put here information about your Wi-Fi network. And also we need to change this. Uh, our LED is connected to pin number 18. 18, 18, our LED is connected, uh, inverted, so I'm going to change this and put 18 also here and here. Now go to tools and open serial monitor and uh, compile and upload. Once it is uploaded, go to Serial Monitor. Uh, our body is connected to Wi-Fi. Copy this IP address. Go to your web browser. Paste the IP address. And watch. When I click here, LED is off. LED is on. Off. On. So we are controlling our LED through website. If you like, you can watch this video. There are more uh, examples and uh, it's like super simple to follow it. And uh, that's it. That's everything for this tutorial. I really hope you design and build your own board and it's working. If yes, fantastic job. Well done. Now, you know everything important to start designing your own project. If you would like to learn more about electronics, check out our online courses. You can find their courses about KiCad, Altium, Cadent, there are courses for beginners and also for professionals about designing boards, PCB layout, EMC testing, measuring and more. Just go to fedevel.com. Please don't forget to leave your comments and let me know if you like this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.